Oh, hello everyone. You have tuned into the Monica Brandt show and I am your host, Monica Brandt. And over this last year and almost, well, almost a year and a half, I have had such an amazing time interviewing so many celebrities, stars all across the board with uh, the bodybuilding and fitness industry, legendary guests um, who have helped create this industry. I've brought in nutritionists, I've brought in media people, photographers, uh, magazine editors from Muscle and Fitness for years. Like I've had just about everyone. And I've also, over this last two years, been able to start working alongside a very talented photographer and become um, a super close friend, uh, Sarah Lyons Gladman. And she has a company called Picture Group that um, I've shot with many times in the past. But over this last two years or so, we started working together more closely, developing photo shoots together and um, and just across the country here in Texas and Arizona. We shot down in Miami, which was amazing, amazing shoots. And we have uh, developed some cool uh, partnerships in this whole uh, photo shoot planning. And Sarah started a magazine, Bodyscape Magazine, which you can see right behind me. Um, and I ended up on her sixth issue and we started working together with Bodyscape Magazine. And so since that uh, partnership, and just a partnership in this developing these uh, ideas, we decided that we had to bring in our cover models for Bodyscape Magazine. So today is a very special guest um, who is on one of our upcoming and uh, covers for Bodyscape Magazine. Of course, I had to have uh, Sarah Lyons come on and be my co-host for today's show. So there Hi. she is. Hi, lovely. Oh, good, <laughs> good to be this back. Yeah, I know. It's good to see you. And we kind of are matching tones because, you know, oh. I asked you what you're wearing so I could blend in a little bit with you. We're moving into <laughs> fall. We're moving into fall. We're I know, right? Right, right. <laughs> how are you today anyways? Fabulous. Thanks for asking. And you, how are you doing? I'm doing good. good <laughs> doing good. good. <laughs> I'm excited about our time here with our beautiful model. Well, she's not just a model, right? No. It's not just a model. I mean, it's so much more than that. Like the model part is the icing on the cake for this woman. She's mind blowing. She's super talented, amazing. And and I know you've known her for quite a while and you've worked with yeah. her an awful lot. So do you mind doing our introduction for this beautiful woman? Oh, not at all. Oh my gosh. You guys <laughs> are going to be so excited to hear from the next bodyscape cover model. Um, there's some bodyscape issues behind me. You can't see all of them. There are a lot of Oh my goodness. Yep. And Monica and I worked with uh, this beautiful woman in Miami during the epic destination photo shoots there that we did this past spring. Uh, she's super special. She is now living back home in her home country of Georgia. I say that to people and they're like, wait, there's a country named Georgia. I, like I oh, there is. Yep. And she, <laughs> she made the journey to come uh, to come shoot with us. So let's welcome my good friend and the next body skate cover model, E. Katharina Maishvili. Woo! Hey. <laughs> How are you? Oh my God. Hi, beautiful. I'm so excited to see you guys. Oh, you too. So like good to see you. Like inviting me. Yes, <laughs> virtual hugs. Virtual <laughs> hugs. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Aww. So, E. Kat, I think we so good. Well, thank oh, you. So you do too, you dear. Beautiful. You're like glowing. Like it must be the California mist, yeah. you know, coming Spanish from the ocean. Yeah, I yeah. Miss it so much. Well, let's. <laughs> you know, what, Ikat, Ikat, we've got a video to show you before we get going here. So, are you ready to see a video? Yes. Awesome. Say. Awesome. Uh, Claudia, <laughs> can you can you bring our video in, Claudia?
just for making me cry. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I feel like I'm back there. Right? I know. That yeah, is a nice transportation in time. Yeah, it's a very, very happy time for yeah. all of us. <laughs> and it was my, you know what? I, I We're going to talk about the shoot. We're going to talk about your beautiful cover and your feature. I want to go through it with you. But before that, we just kind of want to get some background on you because, you know, I always love hearing about people's background, you know, especially someone like yourself, you have such a diverse strong story your journey is just amazing and i know that that we can all learn so much from you and be inspired by you and also be entertained <laughs> so i want to just kind of right i want to dive in you know kind of go back so first of all where are you right now and um what are you doing currently um i'm back in california i'm visiting <laughs> my friends my clients you know um 20 years I've been here, so I really miss it. So I came back visit, and then I probably go back to Georgia. <laughs> and, uh, we'll see what happens. My life is really uh, half and half. I'm in Georgia and I'm in America, so mm -hmm. we'll see. Okay. But now I'm well, in California. Okay, well, I what part of um, LA are you in? Are you down by the beach or are you more inland? I'm uh, by the Newport Beach. By Newport. Okay, yeah. beautiful. Yeah, That's wonderful so down beautiful. there. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. And I is the sun out nice. today? Yes, beautiful. It's awesome. really nice. Yeah. yeah. I forgot how nice it's here. <laughs> well, you know, I was as I was reading your story, I thought about myself. I moved to California when I was 24 as well. I was only out there for 10 years. But I was like, oh, like we have that kind of, I know I only came from Texas, but I only knew two people in California. I didn't really know anyone <laughs> out there. So it was kind of the same, yeah. like just going out there, yeah. trying. Maybe someday we can visit about that more because it's fun to kind of compare stories. But today is about you. So I want to kind of go back into time and learn about you as a young child. Where did, you know, I, I know you're from Georgia, but what was it like growing up there? Can you kind of take us through your childhood, your family and what, you know, yeah, what what did you grow up in? Because it's so, it sounds so different. Mm. Well, I grew up um, in country of Georgia, city, Philly city. Um, you know, I had a really, really hard childhood. I grew up very poor, um, you know, especially in communism time when mm. everything was different. Uh, but, um, what saved me was gymnastics, you know, uh, when situation at home was really bad that I don't want to be home, I would go and um, work out, train, you know, myself uh, for hours and hours. That was like my escape uh, doing gymnastics, um, you know, and I found my passion and it's kind of saved my life really because my childhood was not good. I don't really felt that, you know, when children just play and enjoy and stuff like that, um, we not had that much. But, you know, it's okay because that's, um, that's what um, make me who I am today. Mm -hmm. I'm still very grateful. I think if I was, if I had a good childhood, maybe I did not end up in America. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so exactly. Everything happens for a reason. I, I would not change a thing, you know? I'm glad I had a hard childhood. I'm glad I had to move to America to start my life, you know? Because look where it's leading me. Mm -hmm. To you guys, <laughs> to this beautiful place, <laughs> to all this we're doing today and creating. So it's really started from my childhood, and I always dreamed of to have a life that um, not only that I'm good, but I could help my family. So mm -hmm. it's really pushed me, you know, to be so today. So you, you said you started gymnastics. So did you actually, were you able to go to like a gymnastics place and learn from somebody? Yes, we actually do have really good, really, really good uh, trainers. For gymnastic, I started when I was eight, mm -hmm. and we trained uh, four or five hours, guys. But when I would come back home, 
I would train myself outside. You know, I don't have the gym or whatever. I would still train outside by my house, so I, so I don't want to go home. I'd rather be outside and train and train and train. Mm. <laughs> so I think I, that's how it's also helped me to become better and mm. become good gymnast, you know? Yeah. Um, can you, can you, you know, I understand you did rhythmic gymnastics, right? So yes. what, how is that different um, than regular gymnastics that we you know, normally see? How is that different? Uh, it's, uh, it's very different. You know, we only have a same set floor fence without anything, but we use um, jump rope, hoop, ball, clubs, and ribbon. Um, and sports gymnasts have another equipment to do it. So, and it's, not, you know, it's more like dance, more like ballet versus sports gymnastics are more tough and a lot of flips and I mean it's I think it's harder I just started rhythmic gymnastics and I just fall in love with it and mm -hmm. stay with it you know because I love it so much did you say okay. rhythmic gymnastics is harder than regular gymnastics no 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 I oh. think sports sports okay. gymnastics is harder well it's the least it's harder on your body Harder on the body, okay. Doing gymnastics is really hard also. You know, you had to practice so many hours to imagine you throw the ball in the air, you got to do so many tours and catch it. I mean, that takes a lot of practice, but yeah. I think sports gymnastics feel um, harder, in my opinion. Okay. So was any, of your, was any of your family also in gymnastics or had any, or is it just something you, you know, decided you wanted to do? My mom was. My mom was sports gymnast. My dad was cyclist. My brother is soccer player. So it's like we are um, pretty much athletes. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> you just thought of that, didn't you? Yes. Yes. I'm like, wait a second. We all are. <laughs> I saw that thought happen. <laughs> so yeah. your parents were supportive, um, I guess, the best they could to have you go do gymnastics and were happy for you to do that yes. as a yes. child. They, they was because they saw how much I loved it. Mm -hmm. So they, they did what they could. You know, they could not do much. Still. When I was 12, I started traveling and I started doing things on my own. Not because wow. they don't want it, it's just because they don't have financial freedom mm -hmm. to do it. Did you but, have yeah. any kind of did you have any kind of support or sponsorship or anything like that through through the company you worked with in order to help since uh, you didn't have that financial support from your parents? Uh, no, you know, back then it was if you in top five, which I was in top three. Um, actual country would make top uh, three people. Uh, we travel a lot, and I know. I mean, I know had money to pay, and I I did not pay because they sponsored us. But okay. only top three or four, like that. Right. So you you had to stay up there in the the upper placements in order to keep that free yeah, yeah, travel yeah. and all. You can travel if you if you don't show that, you know, you can put Georgian names somewhere, you know, you can win mm -hmm. the competitions mm -hmm. versus uh, a country gives you a um, certain amount of money to travel. Not gives me, but, you know, our coaches. Right, right. So they right. can put us to different competitions, yeah. Now, so you can... travel a lot. Mm -hmm. You said um, you won you won five national titles. Is that correct in rhythmic in rhythmic gym yeah. rhythmic yes. gymnastics? Yes, yes. I awesome. became Wait, five how old times how old were you? Country oh. champion. I was. Um, well, I kind of started uh, winning the competitions before. No, I was really not good. Thirteen, fourteen, <laughs> fifteen, sixteen. Those four years, and then when I was sixteen, that was my peak. That's the year I won a lot, a lot of competitions, internationals too. International too. So what other countries did you compete with? Well, I compete um, in Bel Belgium, France, Germany. I mean, it was quite, quite good competition. Yeah. Wow. My goodness. In so how? First competition, first international. I got second place. I never forget, I was 13 um, in Hungary. 
Hungary, do I pronounce right? Yes, <laughs> yes. Yes, I got second place. And from there, I just roll and went up and up. So what was it like for you growing up the way you grew up um, and then starting to travel? And I would assume that your family wasn't traveling with you, that you were alone traveling with your coaches and your, maybe the team. So what was that like for you to go into that place of, um, you know, travel and seeing all these new countries and being around all these different people? Oh, my God, I loved it. I loved it. I don't felt like I need to, I don't miss my mom or dad, tell you. I really <laughs> like it. I just like to be out there. I like competing. And my coach, I always even said that she was like my mom. Mm -hmm. I think I saw her more than my mom, you know. We also mm -hmm. trained. We stayed uh, where we trained. You know, they had a hotel on top. Downstairs we trained. We stay up there. They make sure we're... We, oversee what we eat, what we drink, everything. And I saw her more than my mom. And when I travel, I mean, it was the best, best feeling. Ekat, how yeah. often did you talk yeah. to your parents during that time? Were you in touch with your parents a lot? Not so much, no. Not so much? Okay. It probably, the, it probably wasn't and very... And we know had, we know yeah, had, so um, yeah, so hey, they knew, okay, I'm gone for two weeks and then I come back, that's it. Yeah. Isn't that crazy how different it is now? You know, everyone's yeah. got the phone. They expect you to be in touch with them every day and every minute. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> yeah. I know. I love it. I, love I it. actually did too. You know, when I first moved to California, I had a pager. Did y'all have pagers? Just yeah, the pager? No. <laughs> I totally had a pager. And I, I actually kind of miss that because you get the page, you're like, I don't, I don't have anywhere to call you back. Sorry. Or sometimes you'd be like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to call that person back. Right. But um, yeah. it was just, you didn't have that, you know, instant no. phone and thing. Remember, we had this big phone and, hey, I'll be home after 6 p.m., so call me. Yeah, right. <laughs> We're down <laughs> home, big phone. Oh, my God. How we live without phone. Uh, right. Oh, it's crazy. It's a lot different now. Were you into any other sports growing up? Or was, is I mean, I know that that took a lot of your time, but was there anything else that uh, attra was attractive to you as sports-wise? I mean, before gymnastics, I did two years of ice skating, and I oh. liked it, but, you know, did not, not as much as gymnastics. And, Mike, um, so you, you've been in dance, a lot of dance then, right? Like, I mean, over all the years? Yeah, yeah. And then I did, after gymnastics, about 17, 18, you kind of getting old for gymnastics. Mm -hmm. So I kind of progressed slowly to the dancing. I did a little bit of modern dancing and, you know, salsa, bachata, that type of stuff. Did you ever do country dancing? Oh, my God. <laughs> you Cowboy know, boots. I did, <laughs> I did once in California. It was in San Juan Capistrano or something. And they were so good. And they was kind of teaching me, but they got so irritated that I would not move fast enough. <laughs> they kicked me out of the floor. No, <laughs> I was like, oh, my God, first time I got kicked out. So I guess I'm not good at that. I'm going to work on come that. To, come to Texas. <laughs> we'll, we'll get you country dancing. <laughs> but I love it. It's there so you go. Beautiful. Yeah. I love yeah. it, too. That's fun. Yeah. yeah we'll, we'll have to get you to Texas someday. Next time Sarah comes here to Texas, if there's a way to I get can. you here, it'd be fun. I've have never you, been in Texas. We'll have you come shoot with the horses out at the barn. Yes. I would love it. Love it. Love it. There's some beautiful horses out there and we've got great hands for, for putting that oh together God. and the help and everything. I know that horse as well. <laughs> yes. Sarah knows the horse as well. I it know. would be fun. Well, I know that this isn't going to be our last time to work with you. So um, there'll be more opportunities. I'm just positive. So, okay, so you got out of rhythmic gymnastics. Now, were you still in school going through all of that? Like, how does school work with that type of schedule and travel schedule? You know, uh, they, oh, we got lucky. No, they did, like, who is um, traveling so much? We only had to go and do the exam. Like, let's say I can, I could have missed, a month or two because we was out of country 
but you have to um, go and just take an exam. So yeah, we, we was um, pretty much, I would went to school about four or five times a year. You went um, to school four or five times a year? Yeah, but that, you know, that time when I was traveling a lot and competing a lot, let's say 15, 16, mm -hmm. when I was 15, 16 years old. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I was out of country every other month. Mm. Were the, uh, were I actually studied really well. Were the coaches uh, communicating with your teachers then? Were, were, yeah, how did you know what your assignments were? Yes, because it's also we had the special schools for uh, gymnasts and uh, okay. uh, all the athletes, not only gymnasts. Uh, we had a special school, so they kind of um, let us do that. Wow, we, that makes we, sense. It makes sense. Yeah, yeah. It, it's weird, I know, but it's uh, that time. Like honestly, I was not in school like everyday school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it's probably very similar to some of the online school and different things that are available now. I know my husband's business, we have a lot of youth that ride horses and they want to show year round and they do a lot of online school so that they can be available to go to the different horse shows that are yeah. out of the city and always throughout the whole year. But so that's, that's awesome yeah. that you were still able to keep up with school and. But you um, know what, if you so did not pass the exam, you would not pass. I mean, there was not like, don't be really strict about, okay, you have to pass that. Uh, exam to go to another level, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, you're also representing, practice. you're representing the country and they can't have just, you know, uh, I'm, I'm assuming they couldn't just let kids not, you know, do well in school and make sure that they were holding up that part of their education because no, no, you can't no, just stop no, education for sports. <laughs> just to go every day with, and sit in the class with the teacher, it yeah. was not a problem. As Sometimes yeah. that's actually a waste of time for some kids that could do so much more if they weren't just sitting in class. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. They could get their work done like you did. And, and then you be know able to what? If you want to study, really, you will do it. You are in school or not. Honestly, I do. Right. You know? what, do you, what do you think was uh, like the one thing that you learned that, ha you know, going through all of that gymnastics training, traveling what do you think you took from that that was kind of like the life lesson of that stage of your life that maybe has still helped you to today hmm good one <laughs> you know i think it's teach me a lot of discipline mm -hmm. a lot and no matter what happened in my life to keep that one part really going and really be disciplined and focus on that got me through a lot. Mm -hmm. I think that's what I would take. Um, to be able to be disciplined even when everything goes wrong for you. Mm -hmm. I think that's the main thing I would say. Were you... Um, a lot of sacrifice, I guess that too. Like you'll be able to sacrifice. I could not go like every other kid to, hey, let's go hang out or let's go to movies or even let's say you know date someone or when i was 16 or 17 18 i did not because i would sacrifice everything for gymnastics how many other kids traveled with you like how many were in a in your group traveling you know what depends from competition but usually three to five and were they all female all female Yes, rhythmic gymnastics is just female. Just female. Well, I don't know. Now probably it's changed. I heard it's maybe guys too, but my time it was just just uh, girls. Yeah, five six okay. girls. Very good Did friends. So also, you become so close to them because. Are you still you know, Are you still close friends. with these girls today? Yes, hmm. three or four of them. Yes. And what about your coach? Do you still have anything to do with her? Do you? Ever visit with of her? Course. I love her. She's like my mom. She's so she's still in shape, you know, like small and cute, and she still trains and tells me, Oh, when you gotta come and train it, but I don't know. We'll see. I have kids. Is she home. still teach is she still coaching? Yes. Yes. Oh wow. She's okay. uh, 
AD7 or AD8. She's still called. Oh, my God. Yes. She loves it. She's like fanatic. I mean, she's so good. I love wow. her. Wow. Yeah, she's like my mom. When it I'm in Georgia, I go see her. Yeah. Aw. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. So, okay, so after gymnastics and you've won all these crazy titles, by the way, did you get trophies or were they like neck I got awards? a lot of medals, medals, a lot of medals. And where are they now? Yeah. Where are all your tro your medals? Oh, you know where it is? It's in California, but in a storage. <laughs> mm. Because when I moved to Georgia, I didn't know when I come back, when I go. Mm -hmm. So I kept all my trophies and all my medals in the storage. So and, let's and kind so. of, you're going to have to break yeah. them out one day, Ika. I know, it doesn't have them all yeah. on your neck. Monica's got all her medals, or some of her medals yeah. anyways, <laughs> in, in plain yeah. sight. But yeah. It's a reminder yeah. of how awesome, awesome your uh, sports history is. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. All right, so then you got out of rhythmic gymnastics because you got too old. Got it? <laughs> yeah, I laugh because yeah. I I totally get it. I totally get it. <laughs> and then yeah. you started. Um, you said you went from there into doing some more dance. Is that or where did you yes, go from I rhythmic did. gymnastics? Yeah. You know, it's like um, modern dancing, and in Georgia there was very small show. And that time in Georgia, if you dance modern dance, they don't really like it. I don't know how to put together, but I danced anyway. I loved it. We had, you know, a little tiny show. We would go to Turkey and Alia doing little, little performances. That's it. So I did it for a couple of years. Nothing big. I just love the dance. I just love to be on stage. So it seems like I go from... You know, let's say gymnastics is finished now. Where I'm gonna go? Where I'm gonna do my, you know, uh, show off? Where I'm gonna? <laughs> 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 so okay, stage, stage. But I feel, I feel so good when I'm on stage. Like everything else disappears. Yeah. You know, yeah. all my problems, all the everything. everything. It's like on stage yeah. and yeah. I'm happy. Yeah. So I started dancing and I was on stage and I loved every minute of it. How was that for you stage. to go from that very big, big type of competition? Because well, what I'm thinking is I my my competition, and again, I don't want to make this about me, but I'm just trying to analyze because I did a lot of competing in my teens, but high school stuff. And then you know, my career in my competition went like this and then up, right? And a pinnacle when I'm an adult. And so how is it, you know, being a teenager that has gone and won all these big things and then your career your career in that, you know, box of rhythmic gymnastics is over at 17, 16, 17. Like how, and then you have to like start, cause as an adult, you kind of understand okay, just a new chapter of life. I've got a husband now. We've got all this, got that. It's not the same. But as a teenager, I would think that it, you know, there would be some mental games there kind of going through like, oh my gosh, my career's over. What am I going to do now? And not having the same kind of experiences in life and, and maturity and understanding of how life works to be able to just kind of step out of this one giant, you know, international career and then having to figure something else out. So how was that for you? Um, looking back, how, how, how was that for you? Was that a hard transition or? Oh, very good not? question, Monica. I know you, <laughs> you feel that, you know, it's very hard. I'm like, I just feel like I'm going to choke challenge. up a little bit. Oh no, it here is. we go. <laughs> it is. You're so right. It's, um, um, it's like you, um, you know, you are on pedestal, you're doing something meaningful, and then you almost like disappear, mm -hmm. you know? The feeling is, of course, it's not a good feeling, because uh, with gymnastics, I kind of, you know, get that my emotional side out, too, you know? Let people see my um, sensitive side, my vulnerable side. And then you kind of lose that 
how you gotta translate to people, how you gotta connect. It's so different. And you're right. I went one year. I really went. I was very lost. You know, I start going out more, hanging out with friends, and it's um, was the time when I felt very lost because you're right. After um, after being on top, then you almost like uh, you crash, you know. And um, that's when I found, like I said, I start dancing and I found the stage again, and it's kind of put me back. You know, I was not winning championships, but at least I was on stage and dancing mm -hmm. and uh, transforming that feeling again to people. Mm -hmm. You know, that's mm -hmm. what I like the most when through your movement you transform what you want to say, your emotions, your bad or good, you know. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was mental. It's really hard, really hard. I was, I was super lost. Did you have any mentors at that point in your life other than your coach? Did you have anyone that you were able to talk to about that and that helped guide you? No, I actually did not. No, mm -hmm. no, I had to figure it out on my own. And this was not the time like now we can go to uh, therapy, psychology, sports psychologist. You can or just search online. <laughs> Yeah, we know had that uh, outlet, no. But you know, took me one year. One year, I can say I went a little bit of crazy, you know, going out, not doing stuff, and uh, I don't like myself when I do that. When I have no goal, I don't know where I'm going. But luckily, you know, I found a dance, and mm -hmm. I it was okay. Did huh. not get suicide shot, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> It's I mean, hard. yeah, it's kind of like just with nutrition, like if you go off, you know, a, a week and just kind of do whatever, it's like so hard to get back into it. So the longer you yeah, go without, like yeah, a, without, like, so without cycle, a goal. Yeah, bad, bad, bad. It's like a cycle. Mm -hmm. Then you go good, then you win. Uh, yeah. So all uh, of a sudden yeah. you're, you're this beautiful budding woman at 17 without this international. And now all of a sudden boys are probably like, all over you. <laughs> They're like, who's this girl? We've never seen her before. She's yeah. uh, oh, like, I don't know, you, were so, you were so I, um, I, gone all the time, right? With your competing. <laughs> and now you're this um, beautiful young woman. And I'm just assuming that all the guys were like. I would love to see the 17 year old. I don't think I was as beautiful. I don't think I was as beautiful. 17, 18, well, I'm sure you were. <laughs> and I'm sure with the, the movement and everything that you learned, the, you know, the how to move. I mean, and I don't want to get started on talking about the, the magazine and the photo shoot and all that, but you know, you are a woman of movement. And I know I said that in my letter and it's just like watching you move. It's like, you know how to move everything, you know, very well. And it's, and it's obviously it's all these years of, Years of you know <laughs> practice and I discipline, and <laughs> I love it. You're the woman. Of, you're the woman of movement. The woman of movement. That's great. I, love I, think should, I think we should put that in for Claudia. Like hashtag woman of movement. <laughs> yeah, very nice. That's a good one. Yeah, very nice. yeah. Okay, so okay, so we're getting close to that age twenty four where you moved to LA. So I want to talk about you know that. I want to talk about that transition and coming into LA because I know there's a huge story there too. So just um, kind of lead us into what was the dis deciding factors and uh, to move to LA and like, how did that come about? Did you just all of a sudden one day be like, Oh, I think I'm going to move to LA. Like what? Cause I know when I thought about it, it took months to plan for that. And I was just here in Texas. Um, but, uh -huh. you know, we were the same age, so it's fun to kind of go back to that place in my mind and think, you know, and so I'd love to hear your story of, you know, how did you decide to move to L.A. and what did that look like for you at that time of your life? Oh, oh, my God, that's a long one. Do we I know. Time? We've got some time, girl. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're going to take take a small little break um, and we're going to come back with hearing more about L.A. Okay. Uh, well, I start a um, little bit about um, when I was 19. Um, I met a guy and I got married pretty fast in Georgia. And I had my first daughter, Mimi, in 
in one year, basically. So when I was 20, I had my Nini and, um, you know, guy who I met, unfortunately, was not, um, turns out he's not a good guy. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, in Georgia, you can't really get uh, divorced that fast. It's really kind of a big deal, you know. So I did uh, really wait a couple of years to see maybe it's changes, maybe it's better. You know, I struggled a lot with it. And also when I had Nini, I you know, wanted her not to have father. And, you know, you understand women. Mm-hmm. And um, after a while, you know, we, um, I figured out that it's not, I cannot be with him. So I, I split from him. So I had a five-year-old daughter. Mommy, she was almost five. You know, no place to go. Um, my parents also could not really help me, you know, with their situation. And uh, I just didn't know what to do. Mm, only myself could help myself and my daughter. Yes. So, guys, I packed. I only had one bag. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I don't know if I borrowed that hundred dollar. Honestly, I don't remember, but I remember I had hundred dollars in my pocket, and um, I decided to come to America. I got a work visa. I got lucky because you know I didn't know. I mean, they could give a visa or not. So I went to consular and I said, "Okay, they give me a visa. That's my. Um, I this is the sign. I have to go." And um, I left still today when I'm talking about it. I'm thinking I'm talking about someone else because I had no idea where I'm going. I had uh, no, I didn't know English. I had no money. Yeah. And I just grabbed, I, I just packed and I went. I said, I'm, I'm going to make something happen. Otherwise, there is my parents who can help me. There is a daughter, five-year-old, who have no life, basically, without someone to be next to her. And father was out of the picture, com- picture com- completely. Um, I don't know. When I landed in New York, when I landed, 1999, Christmas Day. Oh. And when plane landed, then I realized that, oh, my God, what did I do. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm by I myself with imagine. no money, and I'm in America. Um, and I started from Brighton Beach. You know, everybody knows the Russian area. Mm-hmm. That helped me because I speak no English. I speak really well Russian and Georgian. So I started from there. I started with any job I could get. Like, mm, I cleaned Walmart. Walmart, in Walmart, I stuck up the, I don't know, I waitress, I, I did everything I could. And I started making a little money. <laughs> and I thought, oh my God, I can do <laughs> you know, 50 bucks there, 70 bucks there. And I kind of saw that, you know what, I can make something here. You know, a little bit of money, maybe can move on to other job, maybe more money. And... Uh, in one year or so, I started actually sending money to my family. I think I was happier than they was because <laughs> I had <some> money. <laughs> to be able to provide, right? Yeah. Yes, it was amazing. Yes. So yeah. you know, I started um, from nothing, and really was scary. I think scariest thing I have ever done in my life. But it helps when you're younger, you know. I don't know how I could have done it, but when I'm 24, I really had no place to go and nowhere to go, really. I guess that's why, and I just did it. It's almost you jump, and then you say, oh, my God, <laughs> where did I end that up? <laughs> but exactly. that decision I made, you know? So sometimes, um, take a risk is probably the best idea. Because sometimes you think and you think, oh, should I do this? Should I do that? Can it work? Can it not? No. Some of the best decisions I made that when I did not think even twice. 
Like, Do you know what my favorite going quote to is? And, like flying to Miami. <laughs> 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 I did not think. <laughs> My favorite quote of all time is leap and the net will appear. Yes. Oh my, Take oh that my God. Leap. I love it. leap and the net yes. will appear. My mother gave me this tile that says leap and the net will appear. And I've had it for oh, years. Yes. Live by those words. You have to send me that. Yes, I will. that's how I did it. So, yeah. Well, I, 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 I love, I love that. that You've taken risk, and I know that there's a lot more story here. So we're going to take a really quick break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about how all of those rewards came from the risk. So we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Hey guys, we're super excited to be here at the LA Fit Expo. It's our third year in a row.